Everyone knows the best level in Elden Ring isn't Stormvale Castle or Pharaoh Missoula. It's not the Kaled Swamps or the Royal Capital. It's Fort Height, baby. Believe it or not, there's actually a guy in charge of Fort Height, and he's got a dagger and some robes. Obviously, when you're Mr. Fort Height himself, you don't need a lot to get that number one victory royale. Other builds might need legendary weapons to succeed, but this guy, he's just Ken and he's enough. Oh, and since you can get all of this stuff before beating a Remembrance boss, that makes this a secret starting class. Hey everybody, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. To watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel. It's also how you get into the Discord and play some Helldivers or Commander Magic with your favorite Elden Ring funny man. And make sure to like and subscribe. We're so close to 100,000 and you could help us get there. I mean, can you even imagine? We're kicking things off as a blonde, tan man whose job is beach. I wanted to make Ken from Barbie, but if you think it's Ric Flair, Donald Jonald, Tall Oompa Loompa, or Shredded Allie Beardsley, that's fine too. These runs are like a Rorschach test for your eyes. And speaking of test, we start off by testing the motion controls for emotes. I would like to use the greetings emote later, but it kinda just gets really finicky. Every other run, we start by disabling all the emotes as we open the first door because I have had these things activate at the worst time in a fight. But as we find out this run, when I actually intend to make them happen, I don't really want to do the work today. I don't really want to do the work today. Anyway, I want to get right to the main location, so we get our horse and boogie boogie boogie, brief detour to break the beetle and get the sacred blade for like two bosses, I think. Then, finally, we get to imagine Kenneth in Fort Height. This is where I'm meant to be. There's an imposter here. Wait, is this a Mogus or Fortite? Well, we beat him down and get bloody slashed, then talk to our inspiration himself, Kenneth Height. There are multiple Kens, they hang out together and beach. I feel like Kenneth Height implies the existence of Kenneth Faroth, or at least it should. We get gobbled by some rats, but we have the other deck this piece, so we can use that to grab our fantastic armor set later. For now, put the bloody slash on the knight and start carving up the dragon's toes. Now we have 40 vigor, so we can get dangerous a little better. Impassable Great Bridge is is so easy to pass, why do they even call it that? Then we head up to Redmain Castle, and forget the thing we came here for, or one of the things. Back down the ladder for Flaming Strike, which goes bananas hard on the Erdsteel Dagger. But backing up gets us killed by a bunch of dudes. And second attempt, why is this bridge so difficult to pass? By the time we get into the castle, we have only one flask left, so the flamethrowers get us. This time we get to the grace, but the soldiers won't actually let us in. Finally grab it, and then we get the Red Hot Wet Blade for maximum firepower. Seriously, if you think the dagger will not have the DPS to carry us for the run, you're sorely mistaken. That doesn't mean the build is good though, it just means we have other problems. Oh boy, time to run through Lernia with riveting and engaging press circle on the horse gameplay. Warpy warp, we're in the Bellum Highway, then we're off to the Altus Highway after taking the Dectus exit. It's actually on the left side, you gotta be in the left two lanes. Oh, and since you're turning right, immediately be in the second to left lane. Get ready because the lane ends in 200 feet after you make the exit. Driving is fun. Our pants are being held by the merchant. It's the consort pants because Kenneth Height is a wife guy. Then we grab the ruler set, which somehow still fits us. We're definitely more than 12 inches tall. How does the ruler set fit us? Get a ruler set? I know some people love those puns, so I try to make them show up everywhere you look. Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel lets us show off how cracked the Flaming Strike is on the Erdsteel Dagger since it adds an extra 90 fire damage per hit. The weapon already has base Faith Scaling, and we can turn that Faith Scaling higher with the Flame Infusion. Our attacks are super fast, so the flat damage buff procs all the time. It just goes through bosses like a hot something through butter. Hot hot piece of ass through butter? Bosses like the Crystallion. More stones in the sealed tunnel, Onyx Lord is a bit more of a problem. While the knife has good damage, its poise damage is the worst of any weapon type in the game, so every hit is a trade. And kids, that's why you want 40 Vigor. 
Huh, maybe should have gone for 60 Vicar. Yeah, so remember when I said this build would have different problems? We've got around 6% damage resistance with our armor set. Because we're wearing a bathrobe and sweatpants, Kenneth is truly galeer pilled, voted most likely to spill yogurt on his pants. Well, let's just crank our damage then. The putrid avatar in Caleb gets melted by our spicy dagger, giving us the flame shroud and cracked tier to crack our damage like an egg on the side of the universe's house. Abandoned cave is so full of poopy, but we make it to the clean rots without getting sick. Then apply heat. It doesn't even matter that the Spear Knight is blocking us. They take 40% extra fire damage, so it is not fair at all. Now we'll get paid more, so let's go get paid. Grail first. We usually do the Putrid Avatar first, but that boss has 100% negative fire defense, so it'll go much faster than our janky boy here. The damage doesn't seem like it's coming out that fast until the head falls and we combo it up. Then that dragon is going down for the count. Sorry, the Lord, not a count. Google dragon going down on a Lord for information between the distinction between lords and counts. Theory confirmed, by the way, Putrid Avatar gets so unbelievably roasted, toasted, and broasted. Do other people know what broasting is, or is that just a Midwest thing? Try broasted chicken if you haven't. You know who else will be roasted? Margit. This is so early game that we can just push forward and mash R1 and it works. No need to get fancy. Surely it will be this way forever. Believe it or not, our little robe does not weigh much, nor does the butter knife. So after taking a knife to the guardian golem's ankles, we'll grab that blue dancer talisman and turn the damage up even higher. Just the physical damage though. Only part of the faith scaling does still go to the physical damage. I think that's still the case on the flame infusion. I don't know for sure. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. Nerd Juice and I do some knife fighting, but I come out on top. Then Patches dies in four hits from a dagger. Today, Gostock gets to live. I'm feeling generous as the Lord of Limgrave, but we have to liberate this Mojo Dojo Casa house, so up the danger path we go, with a brief detour to grab the Iron Wet Blade. Later, we'll use that to swap to the Keen Infusion and use Order's Blade. We don't do that. Spoilers. Pop in to meet Nefeli. Say hi, Nefeli. Hi, Ken. Let's get her help with Godric. Not that we need it, it's just like, I don't really know what I would be without her. Honestly, she's pretty passive at the start. We're going hard in the paint, jumping over earthquakes, rolling through stuff, slicing it up with the butter knife. Nefeli doesn't really start hitting until he's going for the phase transition. Phase two is more of a team effort, bouncing back and forth between us. Remember, the couple that puts elemental buffs on their weapons while attacking to add flat damage to all of their following attacks together, stays together. Godric's great rune should help us out. Technically, the dagger scales with three stats, but also- No, it doesn't. Like like E scaling strength and dex if we're on flame infusion, which we will be because it's really, really good. Radon time, he made a mistake. Look at the battleground. Yeah, cause actually my job, it's just beach. Oh, but we can't summon the other Kens without saying hi. Motion controls work great. Hi Ken. Hi Ken. Hi Ken. Come on. Hi Ken. Hi, Ken. Thankfully, Radon is just shooting super dimensional gravity arrows at us. Nothing stressful. I didn't summon Theralina, not because it wouldn't fit with the Ken theme. She just doesn't do a lot. Like, sorry, girl. There's so many badass women in this game, and Theralina is just a flop. Go on, girl. Give us nothing. There are enough girl bosses. Theralina is here to represent the girl fails. Radon is weakest to fire damage, so we can burn him down. With Radon beached off, we can head to carry a manor. Obviously, Ken can carry a manor. Our abs are as hard as rocks. Plastic rocks. Our abs are plastic. So, hey, why are we not using Order's Blade when Kenneth does? And why not using Wrath of Gold? Well, I'm tired. It's been going on since the Four Elements video. I like, use spells, do my best to make them work. Then they don't work as well, and people start pooping and peeing because I talk about my experience playing the game in the video about my experience playing the game. So instead of saying something like, Order's Blade requires you to invest in an entire seal, waste five levels on intelligence despite not even scaling with intelligence at all, and wouldn't outscale a wholly infused earth steel dagger with Sacred Blade on it anyway, or saying something like, I don't know, Wrath of Gold makes you stand still to hit a boss that's right next to you, at least weapons let you roll afterwards has 15 stance pressure and some holy damage. With even a dagger, you could get more stance pressure from a charged attack that takes the same amount of time. Oh, and actually get way more stance damage because charged attacks on daggers have two hits. While building up a combo on a fast weapon, which will combo boost. I won't say anything like that. 
I'm just gonna use Flaming Strike on a Faith Scaling Dagger because that would be sick, and it's sick. Loretta gets cooked in the water, boiled, I suppose. So if Nefeli is Barbie, does that make Ronnie a Bratz doll, or is she just like another Barbie? Another Barbie, nepotism Barbie. I'm sure Ronnie would be a great witch, even if she didn't have the benefits of being a Carrion Royal. It's all natural aptitude and hard work that has nothing to do with the free mansion she was given for being born, or the fact that her mother is the queen of a magic college. Yep, all hard work and talent. Celavis is brewing a potion that will help make Nefeli Elden Lord. Isn't that cool? No need to focus on what the dialogue says because I'd rather focus on today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to design your website because of the new Squarespace Blueprint. You don't even need to know what colors and fonts look good together. Squarespace Blueprint will give you advice to help make your unique ideas pop. Think about it like this. You know what kind of build you want to do. Squarespace just lets you figure out where all the upgrade materials are. Hey, big dog, you're looking a little stressed out about different payment methods. Well, chill out. Squarespace works with Apple Pay, PayPal, credit cards, any way your customers want to pay. You can even let your customers buy now and pay later with Afterpay. And it's not just easy to set up your website, it's fun. I set up our website on your work computer in an afternoon to get at those middle managers who are so irksome during your day. I think you know the ones I'm talking about. Whatever you decide to do with your website, Squarespace has you covered. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today and go to squarespace.com slash 2lockmango and enter offer code 2lockmango at checkout for 10% off your first website or domain. Now let's get back to the ultimate Fortnite funnies. We got a number one victory royale. Yeah, Fortnite, we about to get down. Get down. On the way to continue the Nefeli quest, we cook Bogart's little shrimps. But then Barbie isn't there. Huh, I guess we have to throw another Barbie on the shrimp? Oh, right, we've got to exhaust all the dialogue back in the Mojo Dojo Casa house first. Now we can summon her to fight the Capra Demon and shake the shit out of the controller to actually say hi, Barbie. Honestly, the Capra Demon is easier than making motion controls work. Motion controls are really the dark souls of control schemes. That gives us the Crucible Knot Talisman, which is so interesting because I will not use it. Now Nefeli is big sad, but father of the year over here says that we can make her happy with the Elden Lord potion. Don't look at the dialogue, I'll just summarize. <clears throat> we got a number one victory royale. Yeah, Fort Height, we bout to get down. 12 bosses on the board right now. Ensha killed Alboneric Town. Nefeli's feeling down. We'll give her a potion to drink down. Then we're on the Nakron streets. Beat the mimic, give the knife to Rani. Take me to your Xbox to play Elden Ring today. You can take me to Kaled, but not Lernia Lake. I'd really love to. Red Flask with you. We can be pro Elden Ring gamers. Is that, uh, was that an improvement to narrating the Rani quest? It can be hard to find ways to kill the time. Next time we'll just read through all the Guts Elden Ring videos that already exist for everyone asking why I haven't made a Guts Elden Ring build. How many videos can you watch about Guts Elden Ring already? Beating Elden Ring is Guts from Berserk by Mono Alorio. Elden Ring Realistic Guts from Berserk Character Creation Customization Sliders uh, by Fierce Sage. Elden Ring Berserk Guts vs. Melania by Al X. The Guts Build vs. Berserk Manga uh, by Joe Gellia. This Guts Build is OP uh, by Keem Lo. Hercules Starting a Guts Build Elden Ring by Link O. Elden Ring Build Craft the True Guts Berserker Build All the Fixing by Taco Fun Box. Beast Mob Berserk Elden Ring The Most OP Fun Dragon Slayer Build Great Sword vs. All Bosses by Elite Kuros. Try this build out. How did we not use this OP variation by Don's Round Table? It's Guts again. No shade to any of the people who made that video, by the way. Uh, I just don't want to do such well worn territory. And if I I don't put this in a video, everyone will just keep asking. So now it's in a video, now everyone knows. Right? Not that all my videos are the first one to make it to YouTube. I'm sure I've done videos on the same topics as other creators, but making a Guts Elden Ring video feels like selling sand in Arizona. Now that Ronnie has the knife, Selvis is dead. And we die on the way to Pitya. I pity a fool who dies to gravity. Pitya's corpse has the Nefeli spirit ashes. If she's a doll, I'm a doll. Crossover reference to the notebook and Barbie. Enjoy that, cinephiles. There's a bunch of good ghost wart on the way through the Incel River Main, which I don't think fits Kenneth. I'm not saying he's doing particularly well in the romantic department. More that even a loser like Kenneth can see when a woman's potential for leadership is greater than his own and acknowledges it. We have this damn extra pocket, nothing to put in it, so let's continue supporting strong women. For O'Neill, we summon Eldritch Poison Demigod Barbie, a very popular one, and get to handling the gank. I wanted the Barbies to handle the gank, but that's fine. I'll just do what I can. Then, once they're all gone, we head in with the butter knife. Smooth sailing. Deliver that needle to Gowrie, then bring it to Millie, say hi 
goodbye to Millie in the shack and back over to Altus. We gotta dip into the Shaded Castle for the Valkyrie prosthesis so we can get over to the Windmill Village and say hi to Throne Under a Bus Barbie while we fight the Blasphemy Noodle. But tragedy strikes again as we win. Oh my god! Millicent's dead! I don't know what we'll ever do without her. Gotta figure out how we exist in a world she is absent from. Oh, well, um... Hi, Barbie. Millicent's prosthesis will give us plus five to dex, which does absolute dick for this build, but will also give us 11% more damage when we get a combo going. Fast weapon, go fast. Yes, dork, I do know it stacks with the winged sword insignia, but blue dancer is still around a 13% boost at this weight to all attacks. Winged sword could only give us up to 10%. We have three talisman slots, one of which I'm keeping golden scarab in, so we have two, which means no room for winged sword. Raya Lucaria time. It's really funny trading with the red wolf this time because our health bar gets chunked off just as fast as his does. Or hers does? Is the Red Wolf of Radagon a boy or a girl? I guess I don't see a red rocket of Radagon, so we'll say girl. Thanks for sticking with us. I know these videos are incredibly cursed content. Let's battle with the mourning the death of her child Barbie. Renala tries to keep the golden children hidden, but I find them and carve them up. And we get to see the power of that combo talisman when we one cycle Renala. A little greed in phase two almost makes us come crashing down from our soaring heights, but I'm able to sneak away and juice it up. Let's say hi to Scoliosis Barbie, then she brings us up to Volcano Manor where we can say hi to Cannibal Milf Barbie. I'll grab the Earth Tree Seal for later when we use Order's Blade, or when I thought we would, and then I decided I didn't want to. Holy damage is kind of meh, and we have Sacred Blade which is just faster and has a beam attached to it. Godskin Noble has some decent fire resist, but when this knife is hot, that blubber just kind of melts like butter. I mean, it is butter. Butter's just fat. The Husky Heretic is handled, opening the path to Rykard. He bites us. Then we stab him. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. Yeah, I don't like the right card fight. After a brief dip in the Rot Lake, we can bring the heat to Estelle, and it's hot. It's nice and hot. We get our hits off fast, so he's mercifully not using any big, long, annoying moves that you can't get in on. Will the moose be as kind? Kind of, not really. It teleports and heals. We just carve it as it's healing, then chase it down a few more times to get the win. Back over to the stinkers. The Valiant Gargoyles are a pain with weapons that have reach. How bad will they be with a dagger? Not that bad, actually. I think I overcompensated for the length of the dagger to make sure that we were lined up right next to the leg and not swinging at their mad taints. Speaking of though, God, these dudes love the poison floor. Get a second move. Still better than Rykard because at least I'm using my stuff that I made for this build. Rykard's like going on a cooking show and being handed someone else's cookies, then being told that's what you baked. No, I didn't. I had nothing to do with that. Final boss before the royal capital, and you know who actually makes these gank fights manageable? Nefeli, of course. She's such a great spear dash if you can just gaslight yourself into forgetting how you picked her up. The spinny lightning locks in smaller enemies, important in the Fia champs fight and important for another boss. Later. Maybe you've heard of her. She hasn't met a podiatrist. Always plays Miss Scarlet in Clue. Loves flowers and dancing. Sounds like a fun lady. Path to the capital is open. It's time to go postal. Ah, the royal capital. It's the perfect place to install Nefelia's Elden Lord. I suppose if Kenneth had a friendly relationship with her, that would also benefit him and Limgrave? Huh, interesting. Let's not even point out the fact that she is literally a puppet, or at least not dwell on it. Erdtree Avatar is so free with the butter knife, then we grab the ritual shield talisman. Don't get any drops from the Grave Wardens. Bummer. We're gonna talk about why that's a bummer a bit later. For now, Godfrey Shade is being shady. We summon a lightning lady and eat him up like Christmas gravy. Three minute timer for Morgoth. It's a little hard to get in on this dude, but we get a nice combo on him during the transition, so our damage is high enough in phase two. He made the mistake of covering everything in water. That makes the whole thing a beach. I was born in a beach, molded by it. I didn't see a landlocked city until I was already a man. Four Biden lands is a great place to remind you that the patriarchy hurts men too. By adhering to traditional gender roles, you're forced to suppress your sadness and joy, left only with anger as the masculine emotion. That is what causes mental health crises for men, not Brie Larson having muscles, or Ray Star Wars flying her spaceship good in the People Fly Spaceship Good movies. Be yourself, be emotionally honest, find where those emotions are coming from, and be kind. You can be a whole person not just the masculine things. Anyway, we're not going to fire giant right away because Ken is actually on a different mission. We gotta bring the heat to 
smile and of course bring Barbie until we die. It's because I forgot to say hi Barbie at the beginning of the fight. Next try it goes much better. It really is feast or famine in this build. We're bursting the damage out super quickly. We're getting absolutely deleted with nothing in between. Our mission is taking us down to the Consecrated Snowfield specifically to get the Silver Scarab Talisman. If we want to get this without losing our runes on the warp out, we have to beach off with another Ken, the Stray Mimic tier. Let's beach off. Yeah, that Ken did not have our beaching abilities, which is weird because that Ken is freaking Shang-Chi. Now we have the Silver Scarab, so it's time for a brief intermission. So here's the deal gamers, sometimes your boy makes a little mistake. We put the Grave Warden Duelist on the Patreon for one of the next New Game Plus builds and it won, no surprise there. I talk about the Grave Warden Duelist all the time, I freaking love them. Here's the small issue though, with the New Game Plus runs we start on a file that's already beaten the game like from one of our previous runs and all of those have burned down the Erd Tree. That's a problem because the Grave Warden Duelist stuff can only be farmed in the the royal capital not the ashen capital so i realized basically we had to do a whole new run and halfway through put the run on pause to farm all the stuff so we can do the grave warden duelist the next run so when we do the grave warden duelist it's going to be on top of kenneth height google grave warden duelist tops kenneth height on your work computer you can see how we made the build we are working on that I apologize that it had to be delayed, but I figured if I had to do another run, y'all probably wanted another video anyway, right? So here it is. It's this video and that's great. That's it. Back to the Kenneth Height stuff. We farmed for so long that my sweater succumbed to the rust of time. It's just another sweater actually, but why am I doing two sweater streams in a row? Where are the unbuttoned shirts of my previous videos? This modesty is a betrayal to the loyal fans. I put Sacred Blade on for Fire Giant. It's effectively just Holy Flame Strike, but shoots a beam instead of making the little flamethrower. But also we don't have the Holy Physic tier. So wait, okay, Fire would get a 20% boost, but it actually stacks with our combo boost, not our blue dancer boost since that's just physical so that's 1.2 times 1.11 which would actually be like a 22 percent boost total reduced by 50 percent by the fire giant's resistance for 66.6 .6 elemental damage getting through holy gets no boost but would end up at 80 percent of the damage getting through before the combo was applied so yes i am smart i'm dead i'm dead i'm dead i can't move Ugh, that's not the math I should have focused on. I should have focused on Fire Giant do big damage when we wear dress, we die. That's an easy math problem. Attempt two goes a lot cleaner because I remember to say, hi Barbie and bring the Feli. She just kind of takes some of the heat for us, letting us combo more for better hits. Teamwork makes the memes work. Before fighting the hefty heretic and blasphemy noodle combo pack, we're going to get to the consecrated snowfield for something we should have picked up before Fire Giant. Our combo game is good, but it can be better. All we have to do is burn down a putrid avatar. It's incredibly easy and worth a dump truck worth of runes. I'll take it. 20% extra damage when we get a full combo stacking with Millicent's and we don't have the winged sword insignia because ritual shield is the only thing stopping us from dying instantly, by the way. Now we'll just die quickly, but so do the godskins with morally conflicted Ken and Barbie hitting them at the same time. We didn't contribute a lot to the first fight and then we died because black flame ritual is pretty bad to get caught in when you don't have any armor. Second try, less black flame rituals. Not zero, just less. Or fewer? Grammar fans, let me know. Swag jump to bird run combo? What a treat. Malekith is always a pain with shorter weapons because he's a triangle shape and that's not good. It's the strongest shape. But we actually run into a different problem, the big AOE. I really thought I could outrun it and get some healing, but no, that thing is large. Attempt two, let's keep it clean and keep it mean. I just have to wait for Nefeli to take the aggro and then we can hit Mally from the side. Phase two starts with some janked up hitboxes. How long are they out? These rolls should be working. Oh well, I'm just more cautious about my heels this time, so we make it through. Gideon actually provides a problem for shorter weapons. Not a big problem, at least not the first fight. Thankfully, Nefeli has some unvented rage for Papa Gideon here, so just go ahead and let that out. Wow, it's Nefeli kills her dad's speedrun any percent. We have three minutes to beat Godfrey, save the pickle, and get to that PB. The knife is just so short that we whiff several hits as he's standing still, yikes. But phase two goes great. We even get a stance break and save that pickle, baby. Radagon is super easy with fire damage. Damage, catch flame enjoyers love to let you know we almost died but nefeli came in and said get down mr height during the hammer slammer elden beast is great combo food if it ever decides to sit still that is not its strong suit thankfully the knife is really fast at getting combos together and we're able to chop him up now it's just the super bosses left who get to feel this sweet kenergy god 
God, what a nice, fun movie. Shame it fell off at the box office after the first week because it was too woke. I don't track the numbers myself. I just trust the word of adult Minetta Ben Shapiro. Shame he still hasn't hit the growth spurt. Seriously, they'll pull up a picture of both of them. I am very right about this. Speaking of assholes with ancient ideas, Placidious acts time. If he sits still, we can combo, which is good. But if his hitboxes are questionable, we die, which is bad. I can't believe I'm saying this, but even Vigor doesn't really help beyond the standard 40 on this build. At this point in the game, everything's gonna two-shot us once that ritual shield is busted. He's moving around a lot more in the second attempt, but we have time to heal off in between those janky hitboxes. I don't know why he's coming from the sides on the Omega laser lately. I'm not really doing anything different, but we were close enough that we get in before things get too bad, and that's Blassie dead. Penguin Noble must be opening a Texas Roadhouse franchise because that's a lot of rolls. I'm cooking the Sanguine Noble in the Blood Cave too. We might need a few extra rune arcs. We're already at 11 deaths, and I don't see Melania going super smooth? Moog should be fine. He is very combo food friendly. Of course, we swapped to the Sacred Blade to get around that 80% fire resistance. Oh, actually, you know what spell would be decent on this build? Electrify Armament. Kind of wish Lightning Infusions were still faith scaling, but that would be a little unfair. Basically, as he counts, we count the combos, and we count faster. This is where I realize it takes five levels of decks to get any bonus on the dagger. We'd be better off with bigger bars. Time for a respec and a run up the Divine Tower of Kaled. Sadly, we have to waste a rune arc to swap to Radon's, but let's be real, I'm gonna die. Study hall, yada yada, hug Fia, yada yada, four to sacks, I goofed. I should have switched to Flaming Strike since 40 is one of several bosses with 80% holy resistance. However, having a blade beam isn't that bad. Shooting the head does so much extra damage that it kind of makes up for that high holy resistance he has. Until we run out of mind. Then we have to slash the toes a few times. No big deal. Hey, let's yada yada through the liturgical town in the Halleck tree. They take time in the stream, not in the video. We try to trim the fat for you, but if you want all that flavor, just come hang out on Twitch. Swag jumps never getting skipped though. That's the good stuff. Horse girl Barbie gets bullied. It feels kind of bad, but then I remember with our defenses, if we don't bully her, she's going to make us die faster than an NFT. Not fast enough in my opinion. Now the real boss is trying to grab the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. First, we fall wrong. Then, we get bullied by spiders. But attempt three, we make it in there and get our defensive boosts. Surely, that's gonna make Melania a piece of cake. So, Cholera Barbie is a real mixed bag this run positives. Fire Dagger is good. When she's not on the water, our damage is insane. She has 0% fire resistance. When she is on the water, our damage is still really good. That's only 10% resistance. Nefeli is also a godsend. Do y'all remember the Nefeli run when we found out that Thunderstorm just kind of stunlocks Melania? Well, it still does, just not as well. I think the humanoid spear and ashes might have nerfed stance pressure or something because otherwise the rock goddess would be busted all the time. It's helpful for us by giving us an opportunity to get a combo while she's standing still. Also, her lightning damage gets boosted on the water, so while we're doing less damage, she'll do more, meaning there's not really a great place for Melania to stand to avoid damage. Finally, we're in light load. Rolling further can help us avoid a lot of Melania's attacks. But that's also one of the downsides, light load. Fighting the strongest person in the lands between while cosplaying as the dude from the Big Lebowski isn't gonna give you the best defensive options. Also, light load sometimes sends you into the third jump of the ducky dance, weak. Reach is another problem. The hand of Melania is a sword and it's got BSE or big Sephiroth energy. It's extra long, extra strong, and down to get some extra friction on. When I say that using the Erdsteel dagger against her is like using a butter knife to fight Sephiroth, I'm not even exaggerating. The small dagger also has the worst poise interruption of any weapon. Even the claws on last week's Raven Mount build could break her combos sometimes, but she just powers through everything with a dagger. I've complained about her super armor in the past, and with the dagger, you basically give every attack super armor. Nefeli, like all spirit ashes, is a mixed bag against Melania. Since we've already touched on the positives, let's focus on the other part of the mixed bag. Melania gets to heal when she hits Nefeli. Overall, I think she's much more of a boon than a bane, but that can vary from fight to fight and attack to attack. The Ducky Dance is a multi-hit with like 20 hits, giving Melania a ton of health back. For some reason, the Dash Stab also heals her more than her other attacks, so does the Grab. And Nefeli and the other humanoid spirit ashes actually can 
can be grabbed, which doesn't even open a punish window because bosses are immune to damage while doing a grab for some reason. Again, most of the time, Nefeli helps. All of our best damage comes from when she activates the storm, but the real big issue is just the armor. Since we respect, we have 60 vigor with the 15% boost on top of that from the Radon Great Room. If we were wearing anything heavier than a medical gown, we could live the ducky dance. Like not only is the armor super light, Kenneth doesn't wear a helmet or hands. It's not a light set of armor. It's half a light set of armor. But don't worry gamers, I make sure that every fight starts off with a little high Barbie. Think I'm gonna forget that? Even when the motion controls don't work and it makes Nefeli get chopped up while I try to bring this Nintendo Wii ass gimmick to function. After 13 deaths, we run out of rune arcs. So then everything just gets harder. Yeah, believe it or not, less health, less magic, and less stamina make things worse. It's like putting on training weights after things get serious. Eventually, I resign myself to the idea that I'm farming. I'm just trying to get a drop of Malay doesn't flip the you lose switch. That kind of helps. I'll still try to figure out ways around her attacks. I'll keep trying to make the ring around the rosy work on the ducky dance. It never works. It hasn't for two years for me, but until I figure out how to make it work or she doesn't flip the switch, we're gonna lose. She has a hair trigger on that thing too, because we have no damage resistance. Again, even the night set would make this more bearable. Oh my God, I could even call it the Fortnite set. <sighs> missed opportunity. Eventually we just take a detour to level up our flasks. If we can drink less, it'll be a little better, not much better. Most of our deaths are not coming from a lack of healing. They're coming from watching the health bar that fills half the screen get deleted in a second. This is a really great indicator of how far above every other boss Melania is. Without cheese, at least. I know you can frost pot the ducky dance. I know you can sleep pot the godskins. That's not really what we do here. The most deaths we had to any other boss this run, I think was two. Then Melania just tanks the death ratio single handedly. And she does that to so many other builds too. Good for you if you think she's easy. It's probably just because you're using a cheese strat though. There are definitely cheese strats. Night Comet, Blasphemous Blade. I get it. But I would bet that we could find just as many cheese strats for the other bosses if we wanted to. It's just that no one really does because no one really needs to. The other bosses, you eventually just kind of figure out the patterns and can beat it down every time. Maybe not on your first try, but after a couple. Melania just like doesn't work like that. She has so much extra stuff no other boss gets. But also this one's uniquely shitty against Melania. It really is. I didn't even mention the lack of stance pressure, but yeah, the dagger has bad stance pressure. That means no breaks for the fight, both literally and metaphorically. So we just kind of keep waiting. The stars have to align. Nefeli needs to get a good thunderstorm off. Melania needs to calm the fuck down and use some moves we can actually punish. Seriously, we can burst the damage out when we got the opportunity. We finally get it after 25 deaths, more than double every other death combined in the bathrobe and butter knife build. After six hours and 50 minutes, knocking off the grinding time for the next run, we beat 37 bosses and died 38 times. That's the first negative boss to death ratio we've had in so long, but it still ends up in B tier right behind the black knife. Probably because despite dying a lot, it killed bosses really fast. Earth Steel Dagger with Flaming Strike is a really fun DPS option. Here's how you fix it. Put on some damn clothes. Blue Dancer's cool and fun, but most of your damage is elemental. So if you just slapped on the bull goat set you can make up for that damage loss with the fire scorpion charm and still have more defense like a lot more defense oh and the felly rips she's an absolute boss it's very cool to make her your spirit ash because then she gets to become elden lord nothing else happens and you can't prove me wrong without reading i'm not gonna read that's for nerds thanks for watching nerd if you like the video subscribe for more we got more silly ideas to get through before the dlc drops join the patreon to support the channel and hang out in our discord where we have a dedicated channel for fort height posting you can also follow us on twitch to watch these runs live We'd love to have you.